what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we're here to kick off your comic book week again with another top 10 back issue comics to be on the lookout for. These are issues that we add to our comic book hunt list. We often get asked, hey, what are you guys hunting for? This makes up part of that list. And we're going to get right into it, starting with number 10. Coming at the bottom of the list this week at number 10, we get that Fantastic Four number 94. That's right. And you're going to notice a trend throughout the list this week, Brian. Uh, this is kind of a little bit of a special edition list because honestly, um, this is all affected by recent media news. And this show is definitely long term uh, uh, based uh, with, you know, we're, we're looking for books with, a, with an eye towards the future. And uh, some recent news has really affected that. And this is a book that I've always liked. I've always thought was something to pay attention to as everyone loves Franklin Richards. And this is, of course, the first appearance of Agatha Harkness, who is the nanny uh, of Franklin Richards and a mentor to Sc the Scarlet Witch. And I've always kind of liked this book, um, it, you know, being a Silver Age book, it's, it's in, say, like mint or near mint condition. You're looking at like, you know, 125, 150. Um, but in mid grade, in lower grades, I've seen this book dirt, dirt cheap. It's it's a typical Fantastic Four book um, from this era, but it's not obviously as popular as some of the other keys. Now, why has this gotten popular in in kind of recent time? Well, there's a character in the recent Wanda Vision uh, teaser trailer that sort of um, is referred to as a nosy neighbor, Agnes, who people think is Agatha. Um, who is played by a care by an actress whose name eludes me at the moment, but she's one of those actresses you see in everything. It's funny and everything, but you can never think of her name. Um, so I definitely think that this is uh, a character with some legs, especially since not only could this be a character who possibly shows up in fan in the uh, WandaVision television show, but also could show up in a future Fantastic Four film. A little bit of speculation here, um, but one that I like, especially for the Silver Age kid. And then coming with the nine spot, we're staying with Fantastic Four, but we're getting over to that Ultimate Universe with Ultimate Fantastic Four number 54. So here's my thought. Let's say you're on board with Fantastic Four 94. Then you need this book. And if you're not on board with Fantastic Four 94, because you're like, Jack, I don't come to this show for $150 books. I come to this show for these cover price books I can pick up cheap then this book is for you because this is the first appearance of the same character, Agatha Harkness, but a more modern version where she is a younger character versus the older woman that she is. Yeah, in like the Marissa Tomei one. That, that, that is more likely to be what we're seeing in the movie. Um, so this is a kind of an undercover book and more of an afterthought. I think it's a great um, pick up to, to put with your Fantastic 494. I also think it could be a great pickup if you feel like Fantastic 494 is out of your budget, but you really like this character. You think this character has some legs. In either way, I think this is a great hunt book. I've got a philosophy that I think that with the pandemic, a lot of these back issue bins are chubby with keys, especially these like lower end um, alternative keys. Uh, I think this is a book that could be sitting in stacks of really uncared about Ultimate Fantastic Four. Here we have coming at number eight, we get that giant size Avengers number four. We got a lot of fours in here. That's right. And this is one that we were just talking about with Three Up, Three Down. We talked about really our belief in WandaVision as a whole, Disney Plus. Um, now, this one may have a short term kind of like uh, sell date, right? Bubble time. Um, because this is, of course, the marriage of uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision, which will probably be depicted on the show. Um, and event books tend to be kind of short lived as they tie into media. But we also have a philosophy on the channel and on this show on these lists that classic is classic. I believe that this is a classic book, a classic story that will then be timeless because of the kind of timeless nature of streaming. The fact that future generations will be able to jump into the MCU and kind of pick up uh, and watch this show whether 10 years in the future and they may find that event as important and seek out these comics. And because of that, I think that this book being like so cheap, a $40, 50 $60 book um, in kind of high grade is something to kind of pay attention to. I've seen this book in $5 bins before. Um, this is one that I've always kind of liked, but I like even more now. 
Yeah, and this is one of those books, like you said, it might come and go. But as a comic collector, there's a lot of comic collectors out there that like type these type event books in their collections so they can go back and refer to it. Or, if, you know, they're showing people or trying to get people into comics. There's a book that you can see them picking out and go, hey, in this book, you know, this is where blah, 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 blah. I got yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, that happens all the time. And, and it brings new people into the hobby. So it's a great one to pick up that your collection. And then coming at that number seven spot, we have the boys season two in mid season form on Amazon prime. So we got the boys number 24 on this list. That's right. And boys season two has been so huge, right? The, the, the viewership increase that they've seen from season one to season two was so monumental. I mean, the debate between umbrella Academy or the boys is a dead conversation at this point um, that now Amazon has picked up a second series from the boys they are doing a spin-off series and it's going to be kind of a uh a almost like college age competition series it's like hunger games kind of meets college competition show uh it, again it, it'll be evan goldberg seth rogan uh, along with garth enos and um derek robinson the original comic creators um, so I think it's going to have the same feel. And the reason why this comic has gotten attention is this is a uh, issue where there is a first appearances of like six younger uh, superhero characters who w- would fit in perfectly into this type of thing. I don't think they're going to make this up from scratch. They're going to pull from the comics. Um, and, and, and this is a book that is seeing immediate heat and attention. And because it's a cover price book, it's really an undercover book, a book that uh, people weren't paying attention to. Um, I think it's a great pickup right now. Uh, and even if, even if it's not a direct tie in to this, this, um, the second series, Look at how strong the boys is. Look how strong they're going. This could be a multi-season type um, and multi-series type property for Amazon um, that could see them going for years and years. And for any first appearance in this series is worth getting. An issue with like this many, we love these ones, right? This is a lottery ticket issue and there is an incentive for it as well. Then coming at the middle of the list this weekend, number six spot, we are talking Haunted Mansion number one, but we're talking about that older, more independent series, right? That's right. Coming from SLG. This is a tough to find book. Uh, this is a $25 book or so. Um, and it's not even the most popular book in the series. Some of the later issues, issue five, where they boast kind of like sub 3000 print runs. Those are the ones that people really chase. But you know, we're comic collectors, so first appearances are important to us. And while the Marvel Haunted Mansion series is the one that gets kind of the immediate thought from the comic collector, this is the first appearance of the any comic related to Haunted Mansion. And with a Haunted Mansion movie coming, with the power of Disney films, with the power of Disney Plus, with everything we've said, um, and our belief in our bullishness in that nature, and my man Brian, and his... his uh, Disney fandom, which has really given me an increased appreciation for the nature of Disney fans. Um, I think this one has the potential to be a big hit. Yeah, and I still have a fond love of that awfully panned Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion movie, but I'm definitely looking forward to a remake. And of course, I got one of my Hitchhiking Ghost Funko 10 inches behind. (laughs) I got full 10 inches of Funko behind me. (laughs) But either way, this is one books I was talking to Jack about. It's like I've been looking at nine eights on on that issue number one for a while now, and they go for good money. They go for anywhere from two seventy five to three fifty, but I think raw is where it's at if you can find them. Then hit us at the five spot. We got Amazing Spider Man number six thirty seven. Well, everybody is looking for Anya Corazon right now. Um, she is one of the later Spider uh, girls. Uh, who takes over the uh, reign from uh, Julia Carpenter. Um, And everybody is grabbing that Amazing Fantasy number one, the first appearance, right? Everybody is grabbing the first solo series. I love both of those books, but we're seeing huge, huge spikes in those books already. And it's kind of gotten me thinking. Um, there, the movie, the solo movie that originally people thought was supposed to be a Spider-Woman movie, has now been reportedly rumored to be a Silk featured movie, but Silk isn't the main character. And now the rumors are that it's this Anya Corazon Spider-Girl character. 
that will be featured front and center in this film. Um, and this is not a rumored film. This is a film that is already in uh, part under production, kind of pre-production um, in, in, in the works. And we just don't know yet um, exactly who or what. But the, the rumors of, of Corazon's character to the point that, uh, and by the way, I could be pronouncing her name totally wrong. I apologize straight up if I am. But uh, we will learn her name, I think, as we get closer to this film. Um, but her character has gotten so popular uh, just in the last couple of weeks, I've seen so many Instagram posts, uh, you know, that it, where there's smoke, there's fire. But everybody's missing kind of the Cletus Cassidy carnage elephant in the room of, you know, if this is a Spider Girl film, the issue where she becomes Spider Girl, I really believe, is the one um, where that could be the first appearance that's paid the most attention to. While her first appearance in Amazing Fantasy number one, the, new, the newer volume, of course, um, is uh, a great book, lower printed, great cover. Um, if that isn't the version of the character that we see the character that's depicted on that cover and we see a very different looking character um, and more traditional Spider-Girl costume, then I really think that it could possibly be this ASM 637 which either way is a key because it's her first appearance as spider girl and although she's not named spider girl till another issue uh another allies issue in either way she's given the costume she wears the costume this is the issue and you know these asm books are certainly high printed these are books you can find in back issue bins there are two variants for this book i really like this book as a book with a lot of potential to grow especially if you feel like you missed out already on this character Moving right along into that number four spot. There's been some news this week, which makes this a great one on the list. And we're talking about Peacemaker number one. We got some James Gunn news, right? Yeah, people may hate this one. I'm going to tell you, I am super bullish on Peacemaker. Uh, I, when Suicide Squad got announced with James Gunn, I thought this is perfect. Um, he can bring that irreverent humor that Suicide Squad needs while still having kind of big action drama. We've seen that with Guardians of the Galaxy. He really just needs to duplicate that feeling um, in Suicide Squad. Certainly what we saw at San Diego Comic-Con at home, um, the, the kind of teaser from Suicide Squad, the costumes, this is a far different movie than anyone anticipated. Um, and Peacemaker being John Cena um, and the way John Cena has stolen movies in the past uh, seemed like a character to really pay attention to, right? Um, and the problem with Suicide Squad is you just never know who's going to die. So you never know who to invest in. Everybody's been buying that Blue Beetle number three with the first appearance of the modern Peacemaker. Here's the problem. First off, um, this Peacemaker character we're seeing in, in, the, uh, in the movie isn't very modern. This looks like very much like the original Peacemaker. Um, and also... Um, this character doesn't seem like he's going to die, or if he dies, it isn't going to matter because the announcement that you were alluding to is an HBO Max series coming next year um, starring John Cena as the Peacemaker called uh, It's the Peacemaker. So uh, it really looks like this is a character that they're going to be going long on. Uh, it's going to be written and directed by uh, James Gunn. I'm very bullish on this character, so we're going to be talking about a few books by, of the character, and this is just one of those undercover uh, affordable kind of books right here where it's not not a key major key right but you're gonna be able to find it in back issue bins um it's cheap and it does have some first appearances in it which depending on how successful this is could play out later then coming in in the top three at number three we get fighting five number 40 right and that's the first appearance of the original peacemaker um this is a tough book this is a hard to find book um you know, it, it is a kind of a golden age classic uh, and a book that is uh, not one that people have been chasing for a long time. But it's also a book that may not have been updated in price for a while. So it's a book that if you are able to find, I think there's some deals out there. Um, eBay is tough for this one right now. This is definitely a kind of a look in those bins as conventions start opening. Check your LCSs. Um, do your, your research, your favorite online honey holes. We know everybody's got their secret websites that don't get updated that often. Check those. And uh, um, this is one to be looking for, though, because there's some long-term potential here, even though this is already, say, like a $150 book. 
Um, but this is one I'll take in almost any grade as long as it's presentable. And sticking with that trend, coming at number two, we get The Peacemaker, number one. Yeah, and this is the first solo series. It's the third appearance. It came out after Fighting Fives, number 41. Obviously, this was a popular character that the people were liking, so they gave him uh, a little solo action. Um, I think that this book, in its vintage nature, is going to play in with the marketing of this series so much. This is a comic I, I haven't, I've probably seen it before, but I don't recall seeing it. Uh, so it's one of those things where uh, um, it feels scarce to me. Uh, but this is, I'm almost more excited looking for these than I am uh, long-term for the first appearance. I wonder if um, this couldn't be successful more because some people may sway to that modern uh, Blue Beetle 3. And that's a book we've talked about on the show before. But um, these vintage books, I, I really, really like. I think if this character takes off to its, its highest potential, um, these could be the cream of the crop. And hitting us in the number one spot this week, we get that giant size Batman 100 page special number four. Now listen, retailers, I know you guys hate these books and I don't blame you. I hate these books when they get popular like this. There's no Walmart around me that carries these. These, these to me are like unicorns, Brian. Like people keep telling me these things are out there, but I, I don't ever see them. Um, but this is one of those five dollar hundred page specials. Uh, this is the Batman number four one, and it featured a story which had the first appearance of Jonah Hex's daughter, Ginny Hex. Um, and why is that important? Well, uh, DC Comics recently announced a special one shot, um, similar to the way we saw Punchline, um, a Ginny Hex one shot, it has a one in 25 variant. Um, it's gotten a lot of attention, a lot of press. Her, her uh, inclusion in Young Justice got a lot of people's attention. Um, seemed to really kind of push that series. So I think this is a character to really pay attention to because Jonah Hex has already had a feature film. Um, we've already seen Jonah Hex in the CW universe on the small screen. Uh, he's had numerous comic series, appeared in other comic series, but it's a kind of a tough character to modernize. And I think Jenny Hex gives a kind of a nice way to do that and fit in with kind of the current program that DC's trying to do, push youth, push the generation um, into the next generation. So I really like Jimmy Hicks as a character. And while this book is $20 and tough to find in good shape, I think that could just be the start with this one. Yeah, I've definitely enjoyed her in Young Justice. And um, one other thing that was on the list, but you're talking about with this that made me think of it is, I'd like to see some more Super Sons books also. Oh, man. Yes. So. But anyways, guys, there's our list for this week. Remember, that's our hunt list. Add that to that big master list. There's some great books on there. Some that are a little bit up in price. Some are still in that dollar bin. Well mixed of books. Got a lot about Peacemaker, a lot about Fantastic Four with some WandaVision trends, right? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Paying attention to the news of the moment and reacting without overreacting into that FOMO. So there's our list for this week, guys. This is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, these championship rings on my hands now. In my head, I'm top 10. Yeah, this hands down. You a squad squad, now you're looking man down. Funny high foes, turn to friends now. Drive a race car like a Target. I'm caught filling up. I need product.